Hey everyone and welcome back to some more Life is Strange is 2. So last time we were just like, we, we have packed up all our stuff and I let Mushroom out because I thought it wanted to be. And Daniel went in search of Mushroom and hasn't come back. So that's quite We have a two day walk ahead of us. Better get going. Where are these kids and the doggy? Daniel? Where are you? I'm just following the footsteps. These look like Daniel's footsteps. Those are mushrooms. They're both going in different directions, which is very weird. What the fuck happened here? What? Dude, what are you doing? <sighs> That's not good. Did something attack mushroom? This was a major decision. I didn't want to intervene because I thought, like, that was the best thing to do. He needs to... He needed to do that. Here, you should do it. Is that it? Well, unless you want to say something. Mushroom. You were such a good puppy. I'll always remember running through the snow with you and how you 
You snuggle. And I'll never forget you. Never. Good girl. Rest in peace. You won't be forgotten. Sean, do you think she's up in heaven? With dad? Yeah. I'm sure he will look after her. Wait. What about his allergies? <laughs> Don't worry, Anna. There's no allergies up there. They'll be fine together. Okay. We should go. It's getting late. Sean. I'm sorry I killed the cat. I don't know what I was thinking. If only I could. I know. Come on, buddy. You know what I feel? Sometimes the best teacher is us ourselves. And that, in that moment when I had to choose, my mind told me to let him do it. My intuition said to let him do it, so he will learn why is it wrong. If I would have stopped him right there, then when Wish he would we have didn't been. Have to go. I like having the house again. Come on. Let's hit the road. What about my traps? Should we leave them up? They'll protect the next runaways to stay here. Bye, Lord Snowman. Look after our mushroom. <laughs> so long, my dudes. I should have ended the video here. I, I'm sorry, I messed up. But anyways, we'll just continue. Oh
We made it, Daniel. It's been a long time since I was here. When was that? Before you were born. Hmm. Come here. Let me check you out. Claire likes everything super clean. Dad said she got pissed because he let me bring a snowball in the house. We don't want to look like total pigs. Yes, we hear you. I'm sorry, we don't want any of... Hello, Claire. Sean? Oh my. Is that Daniel? What's going on out here? I heard. Look who's here. After all this time. What the hell are you doing here? Stephen, watch your mouth. Well, it's kind of a long story. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing. You know he's sick, right? Yeah, but... Okay, inside. Both of you. They do know what has happened, right? We're gonna have to have the talk. Is it uh, warm enough for you? Oh yeah. Feels nice and toasty. I gave Daniel some cough medicine, but you should have taken better care of him. He could have been worse. You were lucky. Stephen, may I talk to you for a second? So hungry, my belly hurts. I, 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 I don't know. <sighs> Fuck. Did I make a mistake coming here? I'm not sure it's a good idea. Do we really want to involve other people? Well, maybe he can help. We have to do something. A, a, a police officer was killed. Claire, you know? Our grandchildren are wanted by the police for murder. I know. What if Sean is guilty? Sleeping in our home. Next to us. Let's, let's just ask him what happened. Then we'll figure something out. Okay? All right, Stephen. Are you all right, honey? You want more tea? Thanks. I'm good. Uh, well, Sean, uh, do you want to talk about... Uh, uh... The police called us a few weeks ago. They're looking for you as suspects in a homicide. Now, if you want us to help you, did you hurt that police officer in Seattle. I'll be honest with them. Seriously? You really think I killed that cop? 
No, don't, don't get mad, Sean, we have to ask. We only know what we saw in the news. All I know is that he shot dead. And now he's gone. Oh, sweetie. We are so sorry for what happened to your father, but why did you run away if you're innocent? I didn't want Daniel to see Dad. Like that. I felt like I had to protect him. I understand, but... You know the police would separate us. Maybe forever. Daniel would end up in foster care. Ah, you, you can't be sure, Sean. Anyway, at least you've managed to come here alive. We're glad you two are okay. I hate to think what could have happened to both of you. You need to think of long-term solutions now. I tried. I swear. But I can't do everything. So, what are your plans? I'm trying to figure it out. I just want to watch out for Daniel. Wait for him to get better. Before we take the road again. How can you look out for your brother if you're both running from the police? You two are gonna stay with us. Oh, Stephen. Maybe we should... After your mother left, your dad never really wanted us in your life. I can't blame him. But you're still part of our family, and uh, we want to prove it, okay? Whoa, really? Uh, aren't you scared? The police already called you. Lordy, yes. But we were also scared for you. That's why you'll have to be careful around here. Beaver Creek is small, and... Nosy. We can stay? Serious? Awesome! Ooh, Sean, guess what? There's a huge model train upstairs. Hey, you're supposed to be resting, young man. <laughs> yeah, yes he is. But he seems better already. Anyway, you and Daniel will stay here. At least until Daniel's better. We'll see what happens next. So, I bet you're hungry. Let me fix you something. I feel like crying right now. I don't know why. How do you feel, Superwolf? Way better. It's nice and warm in here. And the food? Yum. Yeah. Feels good. Feeling better? You look cozy. Yeah. I love that bed. Mm. Thanks, Grandma. Good. Your temperature is down. I'm way better now. You still need to take it easy. How about if we say a little prayer and, and give thanks? It's like a bedtime story, right? Well, this is a bit like this, yes. Except the story comes from up there. <laughs> the ceiling. So are we ready to pray? Just follow my lead. Sure. We need all the help we can get. Can you ask the blessed dad? And Sean. Um, and Mushroom. And you and Grandpa. And, uh, everybody else. 
Oh my, you are so sweet. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Sean and Daniel safe and sound into our house. Take care of Esteban and uh, Mushroom, please give us the strength to get over the hardships of the past and the trials yet to come. Amen. 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 Okay, it's bedtime. Try to get some rest. You still need it. And no roughhousing in here. No worries. We're too tired. Good night. Oh, and thanks again. Good night, Grandma. I won't be able to play more of this game, man. Like... It feels so nice to have a bed again. And a bathroom. I hear that. Plus, you don't smell anymore. Whatever. Well, Claire seems pretty caring and nice. I guess Steven is too. I hope we'll be fine here. I think so. And the more important thing is you'll have time to get better. Sean, are we in mom's old room? Nah, I don't think this is the one. Not from what I remember. But it's been a while. Could we check it out tomorrow? Maybe find some of her stuff? Why would you want to do that? I just don't know anything about her. Daniel, I understand. But we need to focus on where we are now and where we're off to. Mom left us. She made her choice. We gotta make ours. And we can't keep going back. No, dude, you're wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess. Hey, man. You've been doing so great with your... Well... You know. I was wondering... How do you do it? Uh, I don't know. I concentrate and it just happens. So, it makes you feel strong? Like, special and mighty? I don't think that. I don't know how I feel. Why are you asking? Never mind. Just curious. Forget I asked anything. Anyway, remember the rules, right? We really don't want Claire or Stephen to start asking questions. I know, I know. Don't show, don't talk. Just keep that in mind and everything should be fine. Sleep tight, little cup. I could sleep all day long in this bed.
All right, I'm allowed to go out now. That's a cool memento of our secret cabbing in the woods. Thanks, Claire, but I will never wear these things. Tanya was training his precision with ease. Fucking awesome. Daniel's inventory. Old tarp. Keep us dry. Okay. Crocodisk. Space scuba. Demon blonde. Canteen. Blanket. Canteen. Night in the forest. Hmm. Sleeping in shelter, fake names, they didn't need to. Okay, I've read this. Settled in. I had to leave Daniel to look for food. Nearest town is 15 miles away. Found my way back. Focus it. Ship captain crew. Back to town today. Walk slow with the snow. Scavenge and trash. Found tons of goods. Huge progress today. Stop the snowball in motion plus heavy rock. Daniel getting worse. No fever yet, but no food left. Leaving tomorrow for Beaver Creek. Fuck. Daniel went nuts. Scary. Need to teach him control. Quick. Had to carry Daniel for over two miles. No one stopping to help us. What's wrong with these guys? Dan getting better. He's eating like a horse. Guessing. Guess that's good. Been hanging out with CNS a lot. Pretty awkward after all this, all these years. They're walking on eggshells. Not to talk about Seattle on, or Karen. There's a huge elephant following us everywhere. Rude. Claire Reynolds, Stephen Reynolds. Reynolds rules. Discretion. Don't leave the house. Disconnection. No phone. No internet. Daily chores. Homework for Daniel. LMA. <laughs> Laughing my ass off. Good luck with that, Claire. Bored as fuck. Grateful for being here, but need to get out. Gotta think of what's next. Ain't no chill for the wicked. Reynolds house. Oh. That's cool. Claire dug this up for us. That's such a baller in his suit. Oh. This is pretty good so far. I love that Steven only has crime and train books. Inherent mice. Oh, man. I miss that dirty little dog. <laughs> Me too. So much more than I thought I would. I don't even know how Beaver Creek looks like. We're not allowed to get out. Yep. Daniel knows how to milk grandma for toys. <laughs> Good. He deserves to be spoiled. Sean! Finally! Sean, are you awake? Breakfast's almost done, so come down when you're ready, okay? Okay! <sighs> What's up? Ah, look who's here. 
But uh, you're too late for the 915 Express. Um, it's okay. I'll take the next one. It will leave after breakfast. Don't be late this time. I won't. Such an... Such a good change of pace, man. Such a good change of pace. Better hit the kitchen quick. Claire's waiting. <sighs> Fuck. I broke this thing like 10 years ago. Aww. I can't believe they fixed it. And kept it. <sighs> it's been locked ever since we got here. And I kind of don't give a fuck. <sighs> Better not sneak in. They won't like it. Yeah, not now. But I'm just curious, okay? I'm exploring. Wash face. Let's start with that. Oh, man. How did we survive for weeks out there with no hot water? I used to hate brushing my teeth. Just like Daniel. Now I can't get enough toothpaste. Wow. They sure did stock us up on clothes for the winter. Saw some teeth in there a few nights ago. I wonder if it's Claire's or Steven's. They have so many pills and stuff to take. Sucks to be old. It's crazy how everything is neat and tidy here. Quite the change from our last home. Hope I'll never have to hold on to a bar to take a shit. Alright, let's go have some breakfast. Stop being nosy. It's cool he took us in, but... How long are we gonna stay here? Oh my, look who's awake. Good morning, sleepyhead. It's that bed. Feels like a cloud. <laughs> I know. You can sit down, Sean. Aren't you hungry? Daniel, mm. breakfast time. Your brother is ready. <sighs> Grandpa, show me your pop star. Steven. Your grandson needs to eat now. You can show him the boxcar later. <laughs> I, I love like how them. they're getting along. Do you need help or anything? Oh, don't worry. I can do this in the dark. <laughs> but thanks for the offer. All right, all right. Are you boys done playing? We had a express delivery with the passengers. But the engine broke down. Yep, has to go straight to the workshop. Good. No trains in the kitchen, remember? Gotcha, Chief. Choo-choo! <laughs> ah, sugar. He can fix his trains, but... Not my kitchen. Did I make enough? Everything's okay? It's great. As usual. You're the best cook ever. Looks like you're getting cozy with this new country life after all. Yeah. It's nice to be far away from everything. Feels like we're the only ones out here. Well, that's exactly why we love it. It feels safe, unlike the big city. I get it. I like it. It's cool here. Well, bless your soul. You'd get along good with our neighbors. We try to lend a hand, like to Charles next door. He lost his wife, and things have been hard on him and his son. He would just get lost in Seattle. But we're all taking care of him here. How old is his son? I, I think he's your age. Ooh, 
going on back there? Nothing. Oh, <laughs> I thought Stephen was a fast eater. Hey, Grandma, I wanted to ask you something about that locked room upstairs. I told you there is nothing to see in it, Daniel. Why were you in it this morning then? Because there's a lot of old junk in there. And Besides, it's not safe for you to explore, okay? Oh, we'll be fine. Aw, oh, kid, you need to go. Why don't you go, go explore yeah. outside? You sure look like you're getting F better. Up. Get some fresh air. I'll wait for Sean, and then we'll go. We won't be loud. Promise. But be careful nobody sees you. Stay in the back, okay? Maybe you should tell him that it was Karen's room. It's just a room now, Sean. Nothing to see. Daniel needs that. He doesn't know anything about her. I know, poor thing. But his mother isn't in there anymore. So nobody goes in the room, okay? I'm serious. Did mom ever contact you? She only talked to dad a few times. Then she was gone. Yes, she was. You know, Sean, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. It's over. Anyway, you have to respect my rules under my roof, okay? Of course. Always. I appreciate that, Sean. Now you better go find your brother. There's a shed with some old toys outside. I'll bet Stephen has the key. Danny will freak. Thank you. It's cool that Claire does her little paintings. I wonder where this was taken. I don't picture Claire and Steven as world travelers. Where was that picture of you guys on the beach from? We went to Hawaii when Steven retired, believe it or not. That's so cool. Did you guys ever go anywhere else? That's as far outside of the country as we want to go. There's plenty to see around here. I think I've seen more than enough. I get it, but don't let what happened turn you away from this country. It's still your home. I haven't seen any actual fish in there since we got here. Yeah, well, I just need some time. I guess. I know. You're not the only one Karen hurt. Hey, Claire? What's on your mind, Sean? What did you think of Dad? You can tell me. I won't get mad. Well, your father was... Uh, he was his own person. That's it? I mean... I know you guys didn't really get along. It's just... Esteban was very different from us. And he never took a single step to change any of that. Did you? I wish we would have. Some bridges you can't cross. I can only live with regrets now. Don't worry. 
You guys taking care of us is all you would have wanted. That's a very kind thing of you to say, Sean. Thank you. Do you know anything about Dad's funeral? There was a service. We couldn't make it in time, but we sent flowers. I'm sorry, Sean. It's okay. I just want to make sure somebody took care of him. Hopefully, you can go visit him at some point. At some point? Yeah. What's the story with your neighbor? Charles? Oh, poor man used to be a basketball coach, but had to move out here after his wife's passing. He's got a job at the rail yard now, and, well, he's still recovering. Wow. I mean, that's sad. We tried to give him a hand, keep an eye on his drinking problem. His son Chris is a little angel, though. I think Daniel would be a good influence on him. He's got a great role model, after all. <sighs> Thanks. I'm trying my best. Well, thanks, Claire. You I are want to very be... welcome. Ask it's them about always the a pleasure to speak with my grandsons. Okay, Daniel, let's go outside. <laughs> Whoa. Look at all these decorations. That's so cool. Oh, so, are you excited about the tree, Daniel? Of course I am. When do we start? Clean kitchen equals clean conscience. Yeah, clean it up to clean whatever you find. Aw, you had a dog? <sighs> yeah. Pretty different from the one we had back at home. Her grandparents? Oh! <laughs> Damn, they're very sweet, man. Isn't she in heaven? With mushrooms? Food. A lot of food. Okay, I found the storeroom. I'll tidy up. See my you tonight, buddy. Little brother's mess. And I'll like tell him to do it himself as well. I don't know when Daniel will be able to go back to his school. What's even the point of having so much crockery? They're guests, you know. Have you ever seen any actual fish in there? Never. Hmm. Think I need a handy assistant. Can you hand me the glue? Whoa! Careful. Sorry, I, I forgot. That thing isn't too stable. Let me just... Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. My fault. Your grandmother keeps telling me, but... Uh, I'm a lazy old man. Hey, uh, can you close the door? I want to talk for a second. Oh. Uh, it's the power cable, of course. Yeah, it happens all the time. So, listen, I've uh, noticed things with Daniel. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, I do. 
Yeah. I do. But uh, how the heck is that possible? I mean, he can... Well, you know more than me. Uh, not really. It started in Seattle after... Everything happened. I wish I could explain, but that's how it is now. And we have to live with it. I, I really don't know what to think. He needs a doctor or something. Then I'd probably never see him again. Yeah, I get it. He needs you. Exactly. More than anything else. And by the way, let's keep this between us. Claire has a lot of strong beliefs. She wouldn't understand. She adores Daniel and just wants both of you to be safe and happy. What I'm trying to say is maybe you should stay here with us. I know you boys plan to run to Mexico, but... We have a home in Puerto Lobos. Dad wanted to return there. Two Mexican boys out on the run. <sighs> that won't be a secret in Beaver Creek for long. America is your home. With us. And you have to think about your brother, you know, his future, all that stuff. It's too dangerous for us to stay here. And for you guys too. It's dangerous to be on the road. Do you think your father would have wanted this for his kids? Of course not. But everything's different now. I know. I know. Well, just think about it. But don't torture yourself. I will. Hey, uh, Claire said you had the keys for the tool shed? Oh, uh, sure. <clears throat> Here. You guys enjoy the sun. And be careful with that shed. It's probably a mess inside. Thanks. It's good to see you in my lair. You know, you were afraid to come in here as a kid. Really? <clears throat> Why? No idea. But you're a big boy now. You can. Steven sure around. takes his hobby. I won't eat you. Cool. Well, I'm sorry, Sean. I know you guys miss your games and your websites. But trust me, a, a break from all this can only do you good. You know, it's it's safer that way. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's mom. Oh, uh, you found this. I uh, I just forgot to. Uh, it's okay. It's been a while since I've seen her face. Uh, yeah. I like taking a look at it from time to time. Doesn't it hurt? Yeah, it does. But she's still my daughter, you know. I can't approve what she's done, but I, I, I think I understand. Good. I don't. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Jean. Please don't... Uh, please don't say anything to Claire about this, okay? Don't worry. I won't. Oh, 
There you are, Sean. Got the key? Hey. I have to go out and run some errands. Can you do me a big favor? Do you know how to work a washing machine? Since I was about eight. Of course. Can you throw in yours and your brother's clothes after the next load? They're in the bathroom basket. Totally, yeah. Um, no problem. Thanks so much. Feel free to keep on tidying your stuff, too. It's good for the health to keep the house clean. Definitely. Daniel can help. Ah, and remember, for your own safety, no phone and no internet. I know, I know, boring rules. Don't worry, Claire. Hey, Daniel! There's work for you. Uh, no. I'm busy. Yeah, busy my ass. Come over here. You gotta find me first. Jeez. You want to play games good. <laughs> Daniel looks like a total thug in his new pajamas. You know I'm gonna find you. Oh. Gee, don't know why crooked frames stress me out like this. No. This used to be Karen's room. Hmm. Wonder what they've done with it. Come on. I need help. He won't go inside one of the rooms, would he? I get that he's sick of all this shit, but... I know you're in there. Gotcha! What the? Behind you! Yeah. Very funny. All right, let's get it over with. In the washing machine, she said, right? So, now to look for the washing machine. Where's the washing machine supposed to be? We spent the whole week locked up in the house. Will things ever go back to normal? I get why they love their town so much. It's kind of cute. Not sure. The bathroom was up there. Where's the washing machine supposed to be? <sighs> All right. Time to take care of that laundry. Thanks, Claire. Gotta do the laundry first. But where's the washing machine supposed to be? Oh my god, dude, where's the washing machine? I can't find it. I've searched the entire house. Not in there. Is it up here somewhere? It's not here. Oh my god, dude, where did you hide the washing machine? Guys! Where is it? I can't find it! Seriously, where is it? Oh, gee, don't know why crooked frames stress me out like this. No, I won't ask Daniel to do that shit. Okay, must be in here. 
There it is. Finally. Ah, simple How many task. programs does this thing have? Okay. It will do. As always with Claire, I can't really tell if this is cute or bossy. Do not mix whites and colors. Ever. Use one cup of detergent for each load. If you wash my clothes, use, deli use a delicate cycle so you don't ruin any of my clothes. Red. One cup. Or... Like it's... Am I done with the laundry? Yes. I need to go out. Boring laundry? Done. Time for fresh air. Daniel, you're not supposed to do that. Daniel! You ready? <laughs> we can go out now. Yes! Wait for me! so good to be outside. Reminds me of the cabin. Right? Ow! Ow! Shh. What did Claire say? Oops. You're right. So Get ready for storage wars. What's wrong? Frozen shut. Of course. Sean, look! See what? We just got here. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. I didn't see anything either. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Okay, I just fell down into the snow. Dad says I'm kind of clumsy. That t-shirt is wicked. Who's your favorite superhero? I love Power, Power Bear. Bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I have the Mega Power Bear! You should check it out! So cool! I've got the Chibi Power Bear! The talking one! No, no one can, one defeat, can defeat justice! justice. <laughs> Chris, oh god! Look, I, I am so sorry. Are you okay? Oh, Dad, I'm fine. I promise. Uh, are you sure? Listen, I shouldn't... Do you know them? It's okay, Dad. They're cool. He loves superheroes, even Power Bear. Ah, gotcha. Hey there. Are you staying with the Reynolds? Um, yeah. Uh, but not for long. We're just passing by. Uh, I see. Oh, jeez, Chris. You don't have any damn shoes on. I'm sorry, buddy. Let's get you inside. I, uh, yeah. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, and, uh, if Claire asks, tell her everything is fine. Is it really? Uh, never mind. See you around. Sure. Thanks, guys. See you later. Yes, we will. <sighs> Daniel, did you forget everything about the rules already? Sorry, Sean. Did you want me to let him fall? 
Really? I know you only wanted to help, but it's too dangerous for both of us. <laughs> Whatever. Rules are boring. Yeah, but it'll be worse than boring if we get busted out here. Come on, Daniel. Steven already saw you using your powers. <laughs> Fine. I'll be careful. I'll never help anybody again. Okay? Daniel. Remember that we're hiding out. So no training and no showing off your power. From now on, you stick with me all the time. Okay? <laughs> I bet Claire already knows us well because... Is it just me or is there a weird sound coming from the game? Like what up? Next morning, okay. Oh, fuck. That kitten never listens. Let's go to the neighbor, son, and get Daniel back. Okay. Time to get Daniel at the Ericsons. Claire? Steven? Anybody home? Well, looks like I'm home alone. Well, maybe Call I could Lina? use the phone while they're away. No, you're not doing oh, that. Oh, right. Sunday morning. Claire and Stephen must be at church. We'll find out, and I don't really want to We had a good dress. time decorating uh -huh. the tree together last night. Daniel loved it. <sighs> Steven and Claire are gonna... F well... I guess they won't be back for at least two hours. Maybe I could use Steven's laptop. It's been ages since I've had news from the real world. Using the laptop? Not so risky. Jeez. Steven went search crazy on us. Look at this. These articles are almost a month old. Maybe they stopped looking for us? What the hell is this? I had no idea Steven could fall for this bullshit conspiracy theories. I'm gonna read this. Hey, is anybody following the Seattle shooting incident? There's a lot of weird things going on that nobody can explain. How did the officer really die? Where did this mysterious explosion come from? How did the fugitive brothers get around? Where are the, why are the police being so secretive with details? Discuss. If you have any inside scoop, please post here. I've been all over this. Go to fakeexplosion.url for full story of this cover-up. The new power plant they want to build in the city is definitely a part of this. Like. Looks like they frame, just framed the poor kids too. I saw the surveillance footage. There is no way it, that was a natural explosion. What is going on in Seattle? Maybe prepping for false flag operation? I read that a motel owner saw the kids and that he said the kids blew up his toilet. Did you see the news report about the brothers at the gas station? Sounds sketchy. Not everything is conspiracy. 
you US wankers. My friend's parents work for the Oregon PD and they, they say there's a big secret manhunt for the two brothers. I heard they might have been used for experiments but they're but now they're on the run because the experiments worked and made them dangerous. I know there are experiments going on everywhere because I came from an experiment. <laughs> She's not serious. Hipster baby dog. Visit Brody's blog. Visit Brody's blog. I'm not gonna log No, it. Brody. If we ever make it home. Wherever that is. This patch off the road is You'll be much, much welcome. To a couple new friend new young friends I made on a recent adventure that I've yet to transcribe or even fully process yet. I'll leave the details in the vague to protect the innocent because believe me, they're not guilty. But let me digress. The best part about a professional traveller, meaning I sometimes make gas money off these patches, is the people you meet on the proverbial road, of course. Proverbial road. Of course, the worst part about being a professional traveler is that you meet people on the actual road. I've been too lucky for a variety of reasons. Though I've had moments of pants shedding fear from highway patrol following me at night to the, that weird motherfucker I picked up in Iowa who wouldn't leave the car. Read that awful account here. Ultimately, I approach strangers as potential friends. If not allies, I'm naive. If not allies, I'm that naive and stupid that Universe feels sorry for me and lets me skate by as I help people on instinct rather than objectivity. First thought, best thought. I still hear my ex-brother, his choice, telling me years ago, you read all this Kerouac crap about life on the road, but you can't even change a tire. <laughs> he was right, so I learned how to change a tire. I'm good at, I'm not good at it, so I also have a towing insurance. End of dilemma. However, I can't always give my own version of roadside assistance, including to my young companeros who needed it the most. I wish I could have done more for them, maybe even joined their quest, because it's a more important journey than mine, instead of just pushing a rock up a hill. I could have helped them move mountains out of the way. If we were hanging out again, I would ask them to forgive me for not coming along to offer whatever help I could. Then again, <laughs> I'm kind of a clumsy dog. I could have Fuck shit up by trying to play savior. Ah, the paralysis of analysis. My suspicion is that they really didn't need me in the end. Just each other. So I'll continue to weave this highway roadside tapestry, always prying it forward. Call it guilt if you want. I'm still that geeky. Sincere kid who looked up to anybody who wanted to change the world for good. Who wanted to move mountains for others. I always want to be a car bound Lois Lane Lois Lane a roaming reporter getting in the face of this corrupt matrix sure my adult cynic knows the system is rigged that we're screwed and that justice is often just a joke but when I saw the faces of my wandering friends who went through hell and are still there for all I know smiling with childlike gratitude at my most trivial of gifts I felt ashamed saddened there are times when I encounter little lost soul and they flash that white-eyed, grateful, frightened stare and you feel the heart break into a million pieces. Now I think of all those children out there alone at night, on the precipice, on the razor's edge of America and beyond, wanting the only most basic of life's needs like food and parents. It makes me cry and sick at once. Then I rage. Rage against the dying of light and vow to do my part. That's the benefit of an activist on wheels. I always like to think of myself as moving forward. Like a friendly shark. Otherwise we don't eat, we don't survive. Now I find myself thinking of the past. Wondering if I gave best advice to those in need. Even if I even helped those lost children of, Amer of the America night by leaving them on their own. Then I realized I'm the one who's actually lost out there. My friends climbing the hills know exactly where they're going and I know they're going to make it home. I'd like to plan a visit. Cody makes everything interesting. <laughs> Even the weirdest stuff.
Damn. I scheduled a premiere at 9 and I didn't even... I fucked up. Shit. I fucked up major. The sky is... A tribe called West. The sky is... Oh, this is a different day. It's almost a perfect blue cliche. As I pull my weary gas beast of winding highway 5 into the tiny main main vein of Rockville Springs, Wyoming and its community height, population 472. This is stark barren land before time, like any other sleepy town from oil. Uh, like any other sleepy town born from the local mine shafts that fed the community, along with the robber barons who owned the oil. The citizens suffered their fair share of tragedy over the decades but managed to retain a healthy main street with a few thriving shops and services. But by the end of the oil-starved 1970s, the once sleepy town was in a coma after the last drops of the precious earth blood that had been mined. The company quietly closed shop and left the town and populace to their own devices, which meant most people packed up, closed shop and left forever. Which brings me to t today to Rockville Springs, Wyoming, 51 population. Inhabited by ghosts who stayed behind to haunt what was left of the town, discarded their white sheets and now are stark naked. There was always an eccentric Lycan Lynchian aura over Rockville Springs as demonstrated by their very own nudist community who had been quietly amassing ever since the 1950s after the local oil first gushed from the earth. The town wasn't as religious or conservative as others in the repressive era, so the thought of nude volleyball didn't cause a legal scandal. How could it, when the city's own mayor was seen or unseen sunbathing in his birthday suit? So therefore nobody gave a rat's ass, <laughs> even though this could see everybody's ass. When the majority of the town was abandoned, a nudist community saw this as a chance to pursue their end goal and lifelong dream, a naked public sphere free of moral judgment. But back in the future, that is 2016, the leftover, forgotten and unclothed residents of Rockville Springs have come back under some misguided public and political attacks for their own natural lifestyle. Thanks to the smug media reports, curious visitors now drive through the depleted main street not to get a cup of the damn pine pie and coffee at Rock Cafe, tell him Brody sent you, but to giggle and take selfies with the new townspeople as their background props. It's rather gross to witness as I did in my brief drive through report, yet there is no doubt some members of the town welcome the tourists because they spend money. There's the old expression, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Ironically, I'd heard Rockville Springs in my travels and vowed to stop there someday, if only to satisfy my need to see a 56-year-old naked man change, my, change the oil in my car. Then I had a boring epiphany. How do you talk to a naked person? I found out. You just talk. You don't forget they're not wearing clothes, but you actually end up being embarrassed that you are. The people I saw and chatted up didn't even have any particularly unique insights about into the world or geopolitics, as the mechanic told me. I gave him taxes, don't ask me to vote for the bastards too. <laughs> Ironically, some tended to be quite conservative. They just wanted to pay for taxes without clothes. Others seemed to stay out of sight with the crowds around, which makes the recent media circus more insulting, since the tone of the reports is always a condescending. Ooh. Look at, look at the funny people with the sagging flesh, cocking eggs and jogging down the road. <laughs> and full disclosure, I admit that the former Brody would have been one of those same judgmental assholes. Glad I'm not him anymore. Okay, take a breath, my dude. I am not saying mild condemnation is a great threat to liberty. We obviously have a <laughs> worse on the... We obviously have worse going on in this big country, but it's always revealing microcosm of how we treat each other in our naked hypocrisy. Okay.
food. I need to get Daniel back. That's all I'm gonna do. Okay. Let's get this Brack back home now. I'm guessing this is the house? Why does Daniel never listen? Maybe I'm too soft with him. Crazy, but I have a superpower. You saw me yesterday. I know you did. I was flying. I can move things, objects, with my mind. Oh, superpower. Really? Yes. Well, that's pretty cool, Chris. So, you're like a superhero? I'm Captain Spirit. I can bend any matter to my will. But that's my secret identity, so you can't tell anybody. Oh, I can keep a secret, Captain Spirit. Now you're an official member of the Spirit Squad. If you betray us, I'll disintegrate you. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Oh yeah, we need a... Team Signal. Totally. I'm gonna be Super Wolf. What's your super name, Sean? Um, how about if I'm like the mentor? Like Professor D or something? Uh, yeah. We'll <laughs> figure out another cool name for you. Okay, guys, I think we're ready to roll. Uh, excuse me. Who are you? I'm Sean. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, man. You're here for Daniel. Hey, let's make it official. I'm Charles Erickson. Nice to meet you. Hope you know that Daniel and Chris are a dangerous team. We better watch out, or they're gonna take over the world. Yeah. They share a lot of things. As thick as thieves. Can we go get the Christmas tree now? We're both ready to fly. Yes, yes, yes. The, the team has been waiting too long. Hey, you should come along, too. There's nothing going on over here. Yes! Can't wait to see all the decorations! And Sean, we could buy Christmas presents for Grandma and Grandpa. Don't worry. Well, don't worry if we leave the house. And remember, you still have to get better, Daniel. Sean, come on. You know I haven't done anything fun since I got sick. It's the first time I've been out for days. We won't be gone for long. The market's only a few miles away. Anyway, Maybe they'll be at the service us. for at least another hour. Yeah, Sean. I can show Daniel around. You can come with us. Please say yes. Please. 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 <sighs> okay. You win. Why? Not fair fight. Do I not get to choose? So let's go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. See? Dangerous. Okay, team, uh, give me a time out to clean up the back seat. I'll honk when I'm done. Oh, uh, can I use the bathroom? Of course. Oh, you'll see my comic books. I'm glad you're coming, too. Hey, you want to see my toys? Oh, Spore, the new hot dog man? Since you're a new member of the team, you have to know everybody. These are Captain Spirit's friends, and his enemies. Dude, that's pretty cool. Can you guess who are the good guys and the villains? Let's see. Obviously, uh, this bear. Dino, looks like a villain. The Car. bad guys, the good guys. Warrior, Not you that look like a easy, villain. right? You're a good guy, pirate. 
Insectoid. No, the bear is definitely a good guy. Uh, insectoid, I don't Look know. Look closely. Sectoid. It's gonna be in villains, Careful. I guess. Careful. But it there are only two heroes. And okay, you're going to heroes. Are we done? Okay. How did I do? You're not a very good observer. Okay, let me introduce them to you. This is Team Spirit, the good guys. Oh. There's the Forest Warrior, Power Bear, Marty Rex, and Sky Pirate. So, who are the bad guys? That's Noctarius and the Shark Stinger. There's also Snowmancer, but he's out in the garden. But they're all working for Mantroid, who's the real supervillain. So, where is he? Hiding out on his evil planet, waiting for me. But Captain Spirit and Super Wolf will make sure he doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> yeah, strength in numbers. Sounds like Mantroid is in trouble. Just wait until he sees what Captain Spirit can do now. Yeah, about that. Um, does your dad know about any of this? Did he see something yesterday? No. He didn't see anything, and the power didn't work yesterday. After I fell, I must have been too tired. Okay, good. Um, I mean, he could be pretty disturbed if he knew. I'm definitely not telling Dad. I don't want to freak him out. He's worried about other stuff anyway. Chris, it's none of my business, but are you and your dad okay? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know, um, Claire seems to be worried about you guys. Claire's always worried. We're cool. Totally. He's just, he has a hard time being on his own. That's all. I understand. Well, I can understand that. But I hope you know you're not alone. Thanks, Sean. But I don't feel scared anymore. I have the power. And I have Daniel. Ah, cool. Sorry, the water eater is still broken. There's the signal. Come on, Daniel. Hey! Pro tip, don't go in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, squad, let's roll. You need my jacket? I, I don't want you catching another cold. No, I'm good, thanks. And don't be waving your arms around when I'm driving, okay? <laughs> yeah. Remember, Daniel, don't mess around. All right. I need to talk to Daniel alone, okay? Game, let me! <laughs> You're just skipping the part where I get the chance to talk to him alone. Like, why? Why would you do that, game? this so this is gonna be my last video for today maybe I'll play some Resident Evil since it's night time now
Okay, buddy. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey! You guys go ahead and we'll come back to meet you, okay? Brothers meeting. Sure. But... Don't get lost. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? I can't believe it. How many times do we have to keep going over the rules? Don't show the power. I know. But Chris thinks he can do all this cool stuff. I wish he could. He reminds me of Noah. I just miss having friends, Sean. Listen, I understand, but we have to be extra careful out here. You can't let people see you. You know the rules. Yes, I know the rules. But I'm careful. I only do things when it's me and Chris. Nobody sees us. Yeah, nobody but me. What if it was Chris's dad? Or grandma? Or a cop? Or... Okay, okay. I get it. But I'm careful. That's not enough. You have to be extra, extra careful. All right. I swear I will. Deal. I'm counting on you, Anano. Can I go see Chris now? Yeah, let's go. But don't forget what I said. Wow. So many trees. Ugh. They look like giant cocoons. Creepy. Hmm. I bet Dad didn't know about this. Dad pushed every year to get a plastic tree. <laughs> but we never surrendered. I'm not gonna talk to people because I don't want to do that. I'm just gonna be a social misfit. You coming, Sean? Don't behold the giant condom machine. <laughs> don't worry. I'll be around. Oh, you'll just stay with these guys. Or maybe you shouldn't stay with these guys instead. You should just walk around, mind your own business, not talk to anybody, let nobody recognize you. It's been a month since the incident, so nobody should recognize you. Find Daniel a Christmas present. I only have four dollars though. What am I supposed to get him? Dear Santa, we've been good kids this year. Please explain this hot mess. Tell me if you need anything, okay? Sure. I'm fine for now. This is so different from Seattle. Don't know if I can get used to it. Is that a yo-yo? Daniel had one back home. Betty loved this. Christmas threats. Ten dollars? That's too much, dude. Something under four dollars is what I need. Hi, everybody. We're taking a year off to run away from cops. Daniel has got telekinesis now. Oh. Hope you're doing well. Five dollars. We only sell handmade local products. Come take a look. Ugh. It's weird to have all this food around after a month of ravioli diet. Dude, can I, like, not borrow some money from his dad? I miss dad's Christmas at all. Only 4.03. First fucking roof. Oh damn, this Christmas market thing is different. Too bad we can't come and see. Maybe right, we'll so unfortunately get guys, pies and eggnog and this is where I'll be ending the video and the next one I'm gonna explore this area, this marketplace, and yeah, we'll see what we can do. With that said, I will see you guys next time. Bye.